Metabolic syndrome is on the rise, especially for individuals approaching their middle age years. Simply put, metabolic syndrome is a group of five conditions that drastically increases your likelihood of heart attack, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. Each of these five conditions should be taken seriously, even in isolation. If you meet even just one of these criteria, you really need to do something about it. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I share my exact strategy for reversing metabolic syndrome. It has helped all of my clients reclaim their metabolic health. As you approach your middle age years, it's incredibly important to get a handle on this stuff so that you can continue to show up for your loved ones and family. So let's go through the five criteria and see if you meet any of them. Criteria number one, having a waist circumference that's greater than 35 for women and greater than 40 for men. Having a large waist circumference is the result of abdominal obesity. Abdominal obesity is caused by a dysregulated metabolism and an excess of stored energy. If you have a large waist circumference, your body is holding on to more energy than it needs. A large waist circumference is strongly correlated with hypercholesterolemia, or in other words, high cholesterol levels. You can simply measure your waist size at home by using a tape Measurer. Criteria number two, having a blood pressure that's greater than 130 over 80. It has long been established that high blood pressure is one of the greatest risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Having high blood pressure damages your arteries by making them less elastic so that blood flow and oxygen to your heart is decreased. It greatly damages the endothelial layer of your arteries. High blood pressure also drastically increases your risk for stroke and kidney disease. Criteria number three, impaired fasting glucose levels of greater than 100 milligrams per deciliter. Your fasting glucose is a simple panel that you can ask your doctor for. This test will tell you whether or not your body can properly dispose of glucose. This is incredibly important because glucose clearance is one of the hallmarks of metabolic health. If your body can't dispose of glucose efficiently by storing it in the muscle and liver, the result is high serum blood glucose levels. And having high blood sugar levels over time damages your blood vessels and ultimately leads to heart disease. Most people don't take high blood sugar seriously because its negative side effects take a while to set in. You really have to think about it as a long, slow process of deterioration. But then, unfortunately, once a threshold is reached, it is often too late. Type 2 diabetes will unfortunately be in full effect and all of the complications associated with it. Criteria number four, having high triglycerides of greater than 150 milligrams per deciliter. You can think of triglycerides as stored energy, and chances are if you have a large waist circumference, you also will have high triglyceride levels. You can find your triglycerides by requesting a lipid panel from your doctor. Having high triglyceride levels is strongly associated with cardiovascular disease. High triglyceride levels are often also associated with other forms of dyslipidemia, such as elevated LDL cholesterol. If you haven't noticed yet, all of these criteria are a roadmap to one thing, and that's cardiovascular disease. And especially once you hit your middle age years, the future of your health will determine how long you will live. And that's why it's incredibly important to start learning about metabolic syndrome now and start doing something about it now before it's too late. Criteria number five, having low HDL cholesterol of less than 40 milligrams per deciliter for men and less than 50 milligrams per deciliter for women. You can find your HDL cholesterol levels in the same lipid panel that came back with your triglyceride levels. I can't stress the importance enough of getting a lipid panel done. I recommend that all of my clients get a lipid panel and metabolic panel done every few months to make sure we're making progress in the right direction. So if you meet any of the five criteria that I mentioned in this video, it's time to start taking action. And the first action step that I recommend to all of my clients is to start implementing zone two training. I did an in-depth video where I describe what zone 2 training is and how to implement it which I'm putting on the screen here if you want to check it out. But let me give you a quick rundown of what zone 2 training is so that you can start implementing it to reverse metabolic syndrome. Simply put, zone 2 training is a type of cardiovascular exercise that improves the functioning of your mitochondria. And it's imperative to improve your mitochondria's function if you want to increase your ability to clear glucose. If you have metabolic syndrome, your body is not clearing glucose efficiently and ultimately it's ending up as stored fat and high blood sugar levels. In order to train
train your body for peak metabolic function, you need to implement zone two training. In order to be in zone two, you need to exercise at a sustained intensity. This will be your zone two specific heart rate. And you need to keep your heart rate in this zone two level for 30 minutes to one hour. Everyone will have a different zone two heart rate depending on their metabolic health and how fit they are. Now at first, 30 minutes to one hour of zone two training might seem like a lot of cardiovascular exercise. So that's why I recommend to gradually build up. But the good news is regardless, zone two training will never have you gasping for air. In fact, if you're super tired and experiencing a lot of labored breathing, you're definitely overdoing it. I tell all of my clients that zone two needs to be at a conversational pace. So if you really are exercising in zone two, you should be able to have a conversation throughout the duration of the session. And that's how you gauge the subjective intensity of zone two. It is a moderate intensity that is sustained. So do the quick calculation of 180 minus your age and get yourself a heart rate monitor. Then perform the cardiovascular exercise session on a stationary bike, a treadmill, or outside on a run or a bike ride. In my opinion, the easiest way to keep yourself in zone two is by using a stationary exercise bike. That's because there will be less variables than riding a bike outside and ultimately allow you to stay in that heart rate zone that we discussed earlier of 180 minus your age. Even if you decide to do your exercise session outside, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you keep an eye on your heart rate and preferably do it somewhere flat so that you can stay at that zone two consistent heart rate. In order to reverse metabolic syndrome, ideally you wanna do four days of zone two training at anywhere between 30 minutes and one hour. Of course, this is gonna seem like a lot at first, so if you haven't exercised at all for a while, just implement one day of 30 minutes to start off and then gradually build up. Eventually, four days at one hour will feel like nothing at all. Informing yourself about metabolic syndrome is the first step to curing it. You can find out more about how to cure metabolic syndrome in the playlist that I created specifically for that information, which I'm linking on the screen now and also in the description below. You owe it to yourself and your loved ones to make this commitment to your health. And I highly recommend having health professionals in your corner to assist you along the way. So seriously, if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be happy to get back to you and help you along on your journey. Cheers, and we'll see you next time.